Hello, it's me, Dan, coming to you strangely, sort of from the future perhaps. I'm not sure how you found this video, but this video is about how to use P5JS with the brackets code editor. And the reason why I'm making this video is I'm making it, any, anybody could be watching this and then it could be useful, but I'm making it if you are right now a person watching this playlist. If learning to program, learning P5 is completely new to you and you're learning with my materials, you'll notice that in all of these beginner videos, I reference something called the P5JS desktop editor. So that desktop editor is no longer being supported. You can still find it and download it. And in this video, I'll actually include a link to where you can download it. But I would suggest that you use a different editor. All of the content, the code, everything should still work and be the same in all of these video tutorials, but you might want to follow along using a different editor. And there are lots of possibilities, and perhaps I'll even make a few different videos showing you different possibilities. But in this particular video, I'm going to show you how to get started from day one with a P5.js project in an editor called Brackets. Um, so Brackets you can find is, a, is an open source uh, text editor that knows about the web, and you can find it at brackets.io. And uh, when, once you're there, all you need to do is download Brackets. It's on version 1.8. I'll have to come to you in the future with like even more. This, I, I bet you I have like a lot more gray hair in this video than the previous one you just watched. And then there'll be another one about you know, this other futuristic editor where I've Got my cane or something in here. But anyway, I'm, I'm off track here. The point is, uh, Brackets 1.8 is the current version. I already have it downloaded and uh, over here and installed on my computer. So uh, if you want to follow along, pause this video, download it, and then come back. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Brackets. And here we go. Brackets is open. And you can see it's kind of opening up with some default. It's probably going to open up with some like getting started project in it for you. And this is something I actually don't care about so much. So uh, really what I want to do is right now open a P5JS project. The next thing I want to do is go back to the web. Uh, this web page here. Uh, and I have also opened up p5js.org slash download. So this is previously where you would have downloaded that desktop editor I was referring to. And now what I want to do is just download this complete library. So you'll notice here this says p5js, p5dom.js, p5sound.js, and an example project. So this comes with a bunch of files which are the individual library files. And those might matter to you to some extent, but for us right now, we don't need that stuff. What we really want is that example project. So if you click that and download it, you're going to get a file called a p5.zip. And I already have it right here. So this is the file that's going to download p5.zip. And now I am going to extract that file. And uh, it appeared right over here. And I'm also just going to open this up here so we can see. So this is really, this folder is the one that I care about the most. This folder is all I ever need for the rest of my time programming and making beautiful P5 sketches. So I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it Shipman P5 and then I'm just going to move it onto the desktop so it's its own thing. And you know what, I can even then, just because just I'm so confident, I'm going to get rid of that and I need to minimize the stuff to find that folder on my desktop which is over here. So this is now my project folder. I'll put it up here in the sky. So this is now a project folder and it has what matters in it is that ultimately this sketch.js file, this is where I'm going to write my p5.js code. Now what I'm going to do is uh, go back to brackets uh, and I'm going to go to file, open folder. This is important. I want to open folder. I could actually just, now nah, I want to open folder um, because I want that whole project folder to be open in brackets. And then I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to click on uh, shiftman p5, which is where I named that folder. I'm going to hit open and there it is. So you can see now, it's a little hard to see, but in the corner up here it shows that, hey, there's my folder and here's where the, here are the files in it. I can go into sketch.js. I can add create canvas 400 400. I can say background 0 and I can say uh, ellipse uh, 200 250 comma 50. So I've written my P5 sketch. Here it is and now here's the exciting thing. Right over here, this little button here, the, give me a tooltip to say what it is. I believe that is the live preview button. So over in the top right hand corner over there is this little like lightning bolt. 
And this lightning bolt is like a play button in a way. It's, it's called live preview. So what this button is going to do, it's going to take the folder that you have, the code that you're working on, and load it into your default web browser so that you can see the result. So what I'm going to do, and, and by the way, I could get to this also for file, uh, live preview, and you can see this is, I don't know what this is, alt command P or shift command P or something, some keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to press this over here, and we see that Chrome opened up and it's taking a moment, and now it loaded that sketch. So here's the result. Now the question you might have is, well, what happens when I want to make change some code? So, you know, background should really be 51, not zero, as you all know. Um, and now if I go back to Chrome and hit refresh, maybe that color was too similar. <laughs> Let's make it something less similar. There we go. So you can see it's actually live up updating. So I can actually move this over here, and you can see that even, uh, let me make this a little smaller, hit zero, hit save, and then it actually updated. So this is a way that you can work. You can have your code editor with live preview, save, edit, whatever, and then you can also have over here, over here, <laughs> the actual sketch um, that you're looking at. So this could be a workflow, and I'm guessing that um, some of you, especially if you're a beginner to coding and you're looking through my tutorials and now you're suddenly using this new thing called brackets, that there's going to be a lot of questions that come up. So please feel free to ask those questions in the comments. And what I'm going to do is come back, uh, perhaps, and make another video to follow up on some of those questions if there are a bunch of confusion points that everybody's hitting in trying to, to use brackets. So there are two important additional features that I should probably show you. For example, you know, I've made my opus, which is this beautiful red background with ellipse. And uh, what I want to do now is make another version of it, another project, I want to base it on this project. So of course, there are all sorts of elaborate methodologies for keeping track of versions of projects and iterating over the history, blah, 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 blah. But here's an easy thing you can do. If I minimize the browser and this, I can actually just take this folder, just copy paste it and say like, and it actually already renamed it, but I'm gonna say shift min underscore P52. So now I have another project I can go back into brackets, and I can go file open folder, and I can now go and open the other one. And now I have a different, and I, and I can make some changes to this one with a different background. I can go to live preview, and we can see, here we go, there's my new project. So if, as you go from project to project, what I would probably recommend doing is just duplicating that empty, that, that project folder which has all the library files and everything you need, and then you can open up that one in brackets and edit its own sketch.js file. And as you, as I go through future P5.js tutorials, you'll see there are lots of different analogous situations of what I'm doing in the desktop editor, you could do exactly the same thing in this particular editor. For example, if you need it at some point, I'll show you, oh, you might want to change something in index.html, then that's just a matter of me going over to this file and editing that file. But for at least these first videos, the only file you need to edit is sketch.js. Now, here's another thing. You're going to see at a certain point, I look at um, debugging. And one thing that I might want to do is say, okay, well, what if I want to know is this draw function actually happening? So I want to I want to put some print statements in. I'm going to say print setup function because I want to see some messages. Print uh, draw function. And by the way, um, this is exactly identical. Print and also console.log huh. do exactly the same thing. So I can say console.log, which is logging a message to the console. And as you'll see in future videos, I use this to check the value of a certain variable to see why something isn't working. Is that color what I think it is? Did I get the data from this web server? There's all these reasons why I might want to log messages to understand how the program is working. So once I run this, where do I see those messages? Well, the only place I can see those messages is in something called the JavaScript console. And Chrome, if you're using the Chrome browser, it has it built into it, and other browsers have this too. But, and the way I can find it, I know a shortcut, which is like Option Command J, but I'm going to show you where it is under View, under Developer, JavaScript Console. So this is what I want to find. View Developer JavaScript Console. If I click on this, then I have my JavaScript Console here, and you can see here are the messages. Set up had a message once, and then the draw function is getting printed out over and over again. And by the way, Chrome Developer Console is kind of smart. It says like, oh, if it's the same message over and over again, I'm just going to say how many times it's been printed and not keep showing it to you. But if I did something like print 
uh, console.log uh, the frame count, which is a built-in variable that's counting how many times the frame has executed. And I hit save and go back to the browser and I hit refresh, we can see here now that frame count is showing up in the console over and over and over again as a new number. Okay, so this is the kind of thing you can do. I can also just close that console by hitting the X and I can get back to it again through the menu or through a keyboard shortcut. So these are all the pieces you need. You need a place to type your code, brackets sketch.js. You need a way to run that code and send it to the browser, that through the live preview button. And then you need to view the results in the browser and also check the console, which is also the kind of place, by the way, if you're gonna have error messages. So if I were to do something like, um, I'm trying to think of what a, a, an error message might be, that um, if, if I'm gonna misspell background, right, if I misspell background and I go over here and hit refresh, you're gonna see that's where I get my error message. Backgound is not defined because backgound is not actually a function, it's background. So you also find error messages there. And notice here it's saying sketch.js, line number seven, and over here, what's on line number seven? Backgound, and I can see I need to change that with an R. Okay, so hopefully this helps you get started with making your P5.js projects using uh, brackets. And um, let me know again in the comments if there are questions, confusing things. I know that the, the most, the comment I'm gonna get is, but my favorite editor is this, or my favorite editor, this editor is better for this reason. There are lots of editors, lots of ways of viewing the results. Brackets is just one of them. I also have two other videos, one that shows you something called Sublime Text, and one that shows the Atom Editor, and I'll link to those two videos in this video's description for a couple other options as well. And I'm actually gonna make a couple more videos showing you uh, a, few, a couple other things you could use too. <laughs> okay, uh, see you soon, maybe in another video.